Hey what's good guys, today we're going to be doing a quick tip on the photoshop bitmap effect. You see this effect used in a lot of old school punk zines or newspapers that can only print out black. It's also used in a lot of single color screen printing or if someone wants to scale a small image into a large format, many times it creates this wonky pixelated look so applying a bitmap effect could create a more stylish and controlled pattern to it. So we're going to be going over three of the more popular bitmap effects as photoshop has many to choose from. The first one is Dater which has this really cool angle triangle pattern to it that runs through the overall photos and shadow. The second one is halftone which is more commonly used and seen a lot and it has a checker like pattern to it where you could customize the shapes inside whether you want it cross haired or circular. And the last one is the fusion which is my personal favorite. It has a more illustrative and stippling look to it where the overall photos and shadows is made out of dots. So if there's a bitmap style you prefer feel free to skip to the specific one. I left a timestamp down in the description below. With that all being said let's get to it. Alright guys, I thought it would be really fun to try some of these bitmap effects on some stills from Quentin Tarantino's most famous films. Just really love the way he lights and plays with the shadows of the characters and they always have this dramatic and exaggerated facial expressions to them which is really fun. So I compiled some of these images and the first one we're going to use is from the Django. So what we want to do is just drag that image into our Photoshop and we want to see the image size just to see how large it is. So right now it's around 700 by 1060 which is fairly medium to small size which is okay and then what we want to do to to activate that bitmap effect is first make it grayscale so we're going to go to image mode and then grayscale and then after the grayscale we're going to go back to image mode and then click bitmap and it's going to show you the screen and there's a couple of different options for bitmap itself there's 50 percent threshold there's pattern theater there's diffusion theater halftone screen and then there's custom pattern what we want to do is click pattern theater click on that and you see there's an the output where this is pretty important because we could play with the different pixels and increasing the pixel amount would also increase the details of how that bitmap effect will lay on top of it so right now 72 is probably the bare minimum so we could just try that first so 72 pixels will give you a bit less detail as you can see the face gets a little bit blurry and less clear and also his clothes and full body. You can always go back and just increase that pixel size. So we're gonna go to edit, undo, the bitmap effect. And now we're gonna go back to image and click on that bitmap again. And we're gonna try 150 to see how that looks. And as you can see, it looks much more nice and cleaner. And the details around the face is a lot more crisp and definitely the shadows pop out more. And we can have a little fun as well. What's really cool about Bitmap is you could colorize it because it's just one solid tone. So we go to image mode and then turn that back to grayscale. So it's edible and we could turn that into a duotone. And just by clicking duotone, it immediately transfers into that solid red color. And we could adjust it whether we want it dark red or blue, orange purple or a funky green or a nice forest dark green just definitely recommend you playing with it as simple as that that's the pattern theater effect all right up next for halftone we're going to use a still from the movie inglorious bastards really love the way this pov view is and just the character's facial expressions and the way he's holding the knife is pretty funny so we're going to drag that into our photoshop just open that up and we want to check the image size just to see what we're working with so we're going to go to image and image size and right now it's 960 by 540 it's a pretty medium to smallish size but that's okay it's a great way to see what the halftone effect can do so we're going to press ok and again to activate the bitmap effect we want to go and turn the whole image into grayscale and after grayscale we're going to turn it into that bitmap effect so we're going to go to image bitmap and instead of 72 pixels we're going to turn it 150 because that image is really small we're going to select halftone screen and press OK. And as you can see, the halftone screen has a little bit more customization to it. There's frequency, angle, and shape. What we want to do is play with the shape. And we're going to click cross and press OK just to see how that looks. It's looking pretty cool. You can tell that cross has a very distinctive look to it. And let's zoom in. You can see definitely that cross pattern to it with the halftone. And we'll definitely experiment and see what halftone pattern you like. Let's go back and redo the bitmap effect and click instead of cross. Let's do round. And you can see the difference from far away. It looks similar, but as you zoom in, the negative space has rounded and separated 
a bit more. It looks like a traditional halftone effect that people normally use. And a shape that's different from the other effects is line. So we're gonna try that out as well. So just similar, we're gonna redo the bitmap effect and click line. And just zooming in, you can see that there's no vertical breaks for that line and it just runs horizontally, those negative spaces. So it definitely has a very unique style to it as well. So that's the halftone effect. Definitely play around with it and see what shapes you like. And lastly, for the diffusion effect, we're gonna use that super badass scene of Uma Thurman holding that samurai sword. We're gonna open that up and drag it into Photoshop. So looking at the size, it's 760 by 443 pixels. Definitely our smallest image. So let's test and really push what the fusion can do. We're gonna change it into grayscale to activate the bitmap effect. And looking at for grayscale, it feels a bit monotonish and muddy. The character tends to blend in with the background. We wanna push that character upwards and darken the background so we could play with the levels. What we wanna do is image adjustment, click levels. Playing with this chart, tweaking it slightly, you can see the difference of how that character retains that nice lighting, but also darkening the background. So she stands out much more prominently in that image. And yeah, that's feeling really nice. Let's apply that bitmap effect and let's type in 72 pixels just to see how well that diffusion can retain those details. And as you can see, it's doing a really good job. Even though this diffusion effect is 72 pixels, it still holds the image really well. Like the fingers on that sword is pretty crisp, the pupils, the hair, and the circles are more far apart and less cluttered. Let's see what 150 pixels can take us. So let's go back and redo the bitmap effect and type in 150 pixels. Wow, yeah, it's definitely retaining and looking much more closer to the photo reference. There's much more dots and those negative spaces are more cluttered. Just zooming in the face, you can see the pupils holding up really well, the hair, the sword, her nose. They all look really nice. Lastly, let's push it even further. Instead of 150, let's do 300 pixels. Let's redo that bitmap effect, push it ever so slightly. And yeah, it's looking much more closer to the photo reference. But just to be cautious, sometimes adding more pixels to the bitmap effect may not be a good thing because it tends to look much closer to the image. But because the image is low resolution, it highlights those pixelated jagged edges. You could tell a little bit from her eyes. It doesn't have those nice curves and it's showing more jagged edges to it. All right, let's have a little fun and add a bit of color to it just to see how this epic scene looks. So let's convert it back to grayscale and let's click duotone and yeah it's looking pretty cool with that red let's try blue let's see what green looks like the dark green looks pretty cool and yeah definitely play with the colors i really love the diffusion look because it mimics a bit of that film grain old school style to it definitely recommend you playing around with it Alright guys, hope you enjoyed this quick tip and excited for you to create some really cool and funky stuff with this BitMac aesthetic. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like. If you want to see more videos like these, please subscribe. I'll greatly appreciate it. Thanks again and see y'all soon. Peace.